I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm practicing on something new. Uh, this is uh, PETE, which is a kind of plastic, and I don't even really know what kind of plastic it is, so I'm going to look it up. Let's see, PETE. PETE. Polyethylene terephthalate. Terephthalate. T E R E P H T H A L A T E. Best known as the clear plastic used for water and soda bottle containers. As a raw material, PET is globally recognized as a safe, non-toxic, strong, lightweight, flexible material that is 100% recyclable. Huh, cool. So this is made from PETE, and this is made from PETE. Which, we're just going to use PETE because polyethylene terephthalate, terephthalate, I guess it would be, the pH is an F, and ter F phthalate, we're going to go with that, uh, is a little bit hard to say. So P-E-T-E, -E, or PEAT. Uh, it's an excellent water and moisture barrier material. Plastic bottles made from PET are widely used for soft drinks. That's according to Wikipedia. So... In order to make it into something that I can process, I need to grind it up. I have a device over here for grinding up the peat. And it's just a Hamilton Beach blender. Uh, I had to do some modifications. Blenders evidently rely on cooling from the liquid in them. When you're grinding up dry stuff, the little uh, bearing down here got hot. And when it got hot, it popped loose. So, this part came loose from the, the blender and stopped working. I had to glue it in with some super glue. I'm going to make some noise here, see just what happens. Well, I think my pieces are too big. They're nesting up in the top and they're not getting down where the blades are. I already ground up this much of it, but I had it cut into small pieces. So we'll get out the tray. And I'll use my recycling shears to chew it up a bit. I probably could dice it up small enough just using the shears to run it through the extruder. But I think having a really, really fine grind makes it work better in the extruder. At least it did with the pop bottle caps. Now the other thing that I need to do is I need to make a much better piston for the extruder. Working with this lightweight stuff, it's flying all over the place. When I worked for Product Action, we actually had a lot of crews in uh, plastics plants. I. I. Stanley over in Battle Creek was one of our big customers, and I got to spend a lot of time in plastic extrusion plants. When I worked for Douglas Corporation, they did repairs on plastic extrusion dies. So I got to learn a little bit about how it works. One of the things that we wanted to get involved in at Douglas Corporation was coating the augers. Extruders use an auger to feed the plastic material into the melting chamber. Douglas Corporation did flame spraying, uh, hard surfacing. 
Uh, they had a process called Diamond Jet, which is uh, a really cool process where they can uh, use a nickel matrix and bond tungsten carbide to surfaces. The tungsten carbide is highly wear resistant. And in the nickel matrix, uh, it provided like uh, embedded hard spots. The nickel would hold the tungsten carbide. The tungsten carbide would provide a hard surface to rub against. The nickel was smooth and acted as a lubricant. The diamond jet process was able to use very, very fine uh, tungsten carbide and embedded in a very fine nickel matrix so you could go thin with it. And also, it made it really bond well because the temperature was so high. And it hit at such a high rate of speed that when it impacted on the steel, or whatever substrate that you were putting it on, it actually embedded itself. So it was a good process. But before I left, we still hadn't worked out all the bugs. Okay, I'm gonna make some noise here. I think it actually works better with a little bit of stuff on the bottom. It tends to make the larger pieces flow around a little bit and provide some resistance so they don't just pop up and fly out. So I'm going to leave that dust in the bottom and I'm going to cut up some larger pieces and drop it down in. I also want to let the grinder cool off. So that's partly why I'm doing it now. Rather than just spending my time grinding material, I, while I'm downloading uh, the videos into the computer, I use the time available to run other projects. One of those things is grinding up pop bottle caps and grinding up cookie boxes. Now I've tried plastic grocery bags and they work. You saw me make a camera shoe out of grocery bags and a pop bottle cap plate. I'm wondering if I can make something similar out of this stuff. Might work better if I had some area underneath it where I could capture this stuff a little easier because I tend to dump it all over the top of my desk.
I need to leave it sit and cool off for a little bit. So that's basically how I grind this stuff up. Now there are probably a lot better things to use. I happen to have this handy. I got it at Myers because I wanted to have a little blender to see if I could grind up the pot bottle caps. It works. The grinders at the plastics plants that I worked at were more saw blades that intermeshed and chopped up the material into fine pieces. The, the little uh, nuggets that they used to put into the extruder were about an eighth of an inch. Uh, sometimes they were cylindrical, maybe a quarter inch long and an eighth of an inch in diameter, but most of them were pretty much round at about an eighth of an inch. They would take a certain percentage of the regrind and put it in with the virgin material because each time you heated it, it lost a little bit of the volatiles. So you could have a certain amount of regrind in it without compromising the quality of the part. You had to be very careful about separating out the colors because you didn't want to mix gray and uh, black together because you ended up with a different color gray. Also, you didn't want to have red streaks or blue streaks in a part. So the regrind was always very carefully segregated. Typically what would happen is they would take the gates and sprues from the dies right there at the machine where they were running it and they would run it through a grinder that was dedicated to that machine. If they moved the grinder or repaired it, they flushed it completely so that there wasn't any residual material in it. I'm not quite at that level. I'm still in the experimental stage. Uh, I don't really care if I get a little color off on the thing. I did find out that if I put any paper, like if I leave the label on a bottle or something like that, and it goes through the process, it does tend to affect the plastic, which only stands to reason the paper is not really going to bond in there very well. So I've been clipping the paper out. The cookie box had a paper label on the bottom of it, so I just cut that out of it. So that's the process. Uh, later on today I'm going to be doing some more work on the injector. Uh, see if I can't get the uh, piston to fit better. I have to make a piston. I also have to bore out the end so that the piston will slide in and out efficiently. So that's going to be a fun part of the project and I'll see what I can do with it. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.